Hello. <laughs> Hi, welcome back, friends, to Hot Goss, episode Hot eight, goss. the hottest of gosses, <laughs> intersectionality and relationships, mm -hmm. and uh, we're very excited to have our very special guest, Lala, okay. joining us. Um, they are so awesome that I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Oh, bless. <laughs> thank you. Hey, <laughs> um, I'm Lala. I am a local um, writer, poet, actor this organizer. Um, I write for The Phoenix, Black Girl in Maine, and I'm an organizer with the Forest Bias Fund. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, and cool. And all around amazing human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, Arande's here. <laughs> also, I exist. <laughs> Our program coordinator. <laughs> oh, okay. Anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I guess like before we jump in, um, I just want to give a quick message to our, uh, our hot goslings. I'm going to make that term a thing. That's, that's who you are. <laughs> um, so a quick shout out to the hot goslings. <laughs> <laughs> that um, this is a conversation, and it's like a definitely a new conversation to speak about it, um, even though an important one, um, and a conversation that we have sometimes as people, but as a society, we're not really talking about this. Um, so first things first, like you're probably going to raise more questions than we give answers, and so be ready for that. Um, and then also, please, please, please feel free to, oh, look, hi, Shane. Hi. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Um, and additionally, like, please feel free to um, like, throw in any comments with your own experiences and thoughts. Um, the only way we're going to make this more normal is to like, make it more normal and like, have yeah. people have the conversation. Yeah. So before we can have a true learning begin, mm -hmm. um, Arande, can you define for us what intersectionality actually means? Oh, I can't. And I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, so intersectionality is not a new concept. It's not a new thing. It's been around for a while. Um, Kimberly Crenshaw in the 90s had a great definition that basically just boiled down to looking at the places where um, all the different aspects of our identity might like overlap or intersect, right? And so like my identity as like a cis, queer, able-bodied black man, right? It's going to be very different than somebody else's identity as like a cis, straight, disabled black man, right? Like we're both black men, but our interaction with the world is going to be very different. Um, and also like how we interact with the world is going to be very different as a consequence of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just really want to lift up your point um, about the spaces in which we do intersect, but also mm -hmm. really paying attention into the spaces where we differ. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that in, with intersectionality, I'm like, oh yeah, like, how are we the same? Like, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's really important to pay attention to you know, our backgrounds, which are like power, privilege, um, race, socioeconomic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. So then I feel like that brings us to our big question, which is how does intersectionality apply to dating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing we're here for. Here we are. <laughs> Um, yeah, thoughts. I really think that it's important, um, especially in, in this community, I guess we'll talk about that, mm -hmm. um, being a person of color, I mean, queer, uh, non-binary. Um, when you say this community, we're talking about Portland? Portland. Yeah, the Portland, 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 Portland main yep. queer community. Um, to really like mark where we've been um, and where, we've come, like, where we're going, just in mm -hmm. terms of um, the history of, like, you know, when we're talking about interracial dating. Mm -hmm. um, and race and power and just really paying attention to um, whether or not we're we're appreciating a person for who they are mm -hmm. or whether or not we're boiling down them down to like different stereotypes and um, really just sort of um, yeah fetishizing them mm -hmm. and, and just um, using them to make ourselves feel better or using them to get something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this term fetishizing mm -hmm. can can you define a little bit of what that means? For sure, yeah. I mean, I think that there are many different ways to look at it, but to me, fetishization is really when... Um, Hi, Sultana. Oh, yes! Hey, Sultana! Hey, baby! <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, fetishization is um, when you you strip away a person's humanity, you boil them down to something physical. Um, you say, oh, you're so exotic. Or, um, you know, I think of in terms of, you know, porn sites, because we talk about porn mm -hmm. sites. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you can search for a big black cock, but there's no, like, mediocre white dick. Mm -hmm. um, and really just sort of investigating why. Mm -hmm. You know, why mm -hmm. do we have this one thing, but we don't have this other thing? Mm -hmm. And I think it really goes back to the fact that, um, you know, blackness is, is sexualized, mm -hmm. um, fetishized. Um, we were used and... 
abused and mm -hmm. enslaved, and they, and they think we need to pay attention to those mm -hmm. roots. Well, I think it's really interesting, right? Like, like uh, you mentioned the term exotic, mm -hmm. and I think that a lot of times when that term is used, um, oh, you're the cutest, Sultana. <laughs> um, I think when the term exotic is used, so like people usually mean it in this, like they think it's like a, uh, a compliment. They think mm -hmm. that it's like, oh, what a sexy term I'm using. Everyone wants to be exotic, uh, but not realizing that like with like many aspects of one's identity, they can hide, right? Like socioeconomic mm -hmm. status, you can mm -hmm. hide. Like you can try to like pass as straight. Mm -hmm. um, you can do all these things to like try to like modify your identity. Like I can't hide my skin, right? right? And so for somebody to come and say like, like, oh, you're so exotic. Like it's like, thanks, I know I'm different, right? I'm the other, I'm already aware of that. And so like, what is like, in so it's, we talked about this with the, um, the your problematic fave episode, right? But, like oh, the, yeah, like, the yeah. difference between like, intention and impact mm -hmm. right but like i'm already aware that i'm different and so i don't need you to tell me how different i am exactly yeah. exactly mm -hmm. um and so i think a good follow-up mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. is about attraction mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and where is the line between preference and bias I think, and I think that's a fascinating one, right? Because like, like, I think that like people will argue that like I can't help what I'm attracted to, like my body responds to whatever my body responds to, and like that's not my fault. And I think that like to a certain extent, yes, that's true. And I think that um, you have to ask yourself, is there a way for like preference and bias to like to coexist, right? Or like, and like I think that they frequently do, right? <laughs> so for example, right, like a human being might say, um, like I'm not into Asian guys, right? And it's like there's a lot of like human variation. Are you saying categorically there's no Asian man that you think is attractive? Like there's no combination of their features that you might think is attractive? Because I would urge you to think like, is this truly your preference? Or are you internalizing these like these different biases, these different stereotypes you've been fed about like mm -hmm. Asians and Asian culture mm -hmm. and taking that in on for yourself? Because I think like it's okay to like whatever you like, but mm -hmm. I think it's really important to question that and try to figure out like, like where am I basing these preferences off of? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I would just add that I think that a lot of times, um, yeah, it is a really important question because I personally um, have been trying to connect more with, with people of color just because mm -hmm. I feel like there, it's a different jumping off point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a shared experience, mm -hmm. um, there's a shared understanding, um, and there's an ability to not have to explain or not have to educate. I think a lot of times... Um, I've tried to have relationships with people or interact with people and for whatever reasons, you know, and they're so, whatever, they just don't have the lens or the ability to see me and see all of my different identities and ways that they intersect and the ways that they add to um, my existence. On the flip side, I think that, so that, that side comes from like me wanting to be nourished and me yeah. wanting to have like mm -hmm. a really... Um, song, strong and solid sort of interaction with someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other side is really just <laughs> responding to uh, just pre prejudices and mm -hmm. responding to all of these like stigmas and these just beliefs that have no foundation but that they're just perpetuated by um, by culture and by mm -hmm. society and by media and by all of the things mm -hmm. and all of these beliefs um, that are also really deeply ingrained in our culture and the books that we read and the things that we um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's actually like a perfect connection. I don't know if you did that on purpose, but Sultana's comment that she just made. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so Sultana's comment, just so everyone can see and hear. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, and how do we also look deeply at, quote, love is love and respect that, oh, but yeah. also recognize the role that white supremacy plays in all of our relationships? So a good example, Donald Glover and his white wife, um, but putting out black art and dissecting black America. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that is really interesting. That, like, that, um, and like, we're going to do an episode about bodies soon. Mm -hmm. I think that like a lot of this intersectionality conversation will be, yeah, will be. <laughs> um, but I think that, that that is like really interesting, right? That like, like, how do we have this conversation yeah. about um, about this world that we live in that we're maneuvering through? Like, where like the structure is fundamentally mm -hmm. set up for certain people. Like, we cannot erase it. Like that, like certain groups have been marginalized, have mm -hmm. been uh, have been objectified, just historically speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and like that has to play into it a little bit, right? Like, like is it okay for uh, for someone like for Donald Glover, for, uh, for example, to have this white wife and then to like be like this beacon right now, like mm -hmm. the black experience? And it's like, and like I, I, I think, yeah, right. Like I think that like they can coexist, but I think that like you do really have to think critically about that, and like think, mm -hmm. and like I don't know him or his wife or their lives, right? But like I think that like for me in my own life, like there's been times that I've been. Um, dating somebody, right? And like, and like race inevitably comes up, right? Like there was like one guy that was flirting with me and um, told me he had jungle fever. And I was like, that feels bad. Oh, seriously? Yeah, right? And like, and I know that he was like trying to be like complimentary, but I was like, like that doesn't no, feel like a good thing No, because that's not what the root is. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, yeah, we need to like investigate. And I think that's just like sort of like Donald Glover, that's a big conversation, but I think mm -hmm. that we need to, I'm gonna try to 
tie some things together, mm -hmm. but like Donald Glover having a white wife, interrogating blackness, whilst also having a history of being a token, whilst also having mm -hmm. a history of tearing down black women, sort of, not sort of, absolutely feels very problematic. On the other side, maybe not on the other side, but a similar side, I've had to personally sort of um, look into who I am as an activist and mm -hmm. who I am, sort of how I want to walk out life, and then also look at the sort of, the type of relationships that I find myself in, mm -hmm. and the people who I am attracted to, and there was, it was a while back, but there was definitely a disconnect, and I had to ask myself some serious questions about, you know, how I want to walk out life and what I want to project and mm. how do things align. And I think that over here, you know, with Donald Glover, there's some serious unalignment. I think he's playing all of us. <laughs> <laughs> whole different conversation. That's a whole different yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That's episode eight and a half, Donald Glover. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like over here, it's sort of like, how do you want to show up in the world? Like, how do you want to walk out your days? Like, what do you, I think it's, I think it's important for movement, this is sort of a different conversation, but I think um, it's important for movement work for me personally to make sure that things are, are aligning and that includes my interpersonal relationships, mm. that includes who I've had to, who I surround myself with. Oh, interesting. So that's almost saying like, so that's taking your identity as an activist, like mm -hmm. as like a woke person and like including that in the like, intersectionality in the conversation, right? Yeah, that, yeah like, yeah. like this is a piece of your identity that like you really value, like the fact that you are an activist, that you, yeah. like, that you do uh, are such like a big uh, proponent for like, like mm -hmm. black rights, black culture, mm -hmm. all that. Um, and so you do have to kind of like take that into like what message is this sending if I'm like, if I'm not dating within my race or if I'm not like, not raising. Or them. someone yeah. who, or not dating someone who um, is actively working to mm -hmm. understand and someone Heard. who, you know, that's sort of, oh. It, uh, yeah. Oh no no! So Tony says sorry. Don't be sorry at all. Like, no, this is you, like, no. What? Yeah, such like, a good you're question. like such a good question. Yeah, like, this, is, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, please don't no, be sorry. Yeah. So perfect. Yeah, this is wonderful. Um, yeah, no, just basically, yeah, I think it's just important to pay attention and important to sort of, for me, it's important to wrap up. Yeah, I guess that as an as an identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and paying attention to what that looks like and paying attention to, um, yeah, what energy is coming at me and who I'm surrounding myself. Well, I think it's interesting too, like it's like kind of like related to this topic is looking at um, going back to like like the history, right? And like mm -hmm. how like as a society, like what we have done for these different identities for a long mm -hmm. time. And we were talking off camera earlier about me and one of my exes. We took a trip um, out of the country and uh, could tell that we were getting different treatment because we were Americans. Mm -hmm. And like, and there's just like this discomfort about it. Um, and then me like not really even noticing yeah. and having this moment where I was like, I'm always aware of being treated differently. Yeah. Right? Like, like, it's like, like I'm like a black person traveling to the world and then also like in this interracial relationship, like I'm used to people looking at me weird. Right. Whereas for them, like that was their first time, like really like having like eyes cast on them, like in like kind of sideways glance. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really interesting to like to keep those things in mind that, um, that there is this intersectionality between like, and like there's a place for it in dating, right? But like that, mm -hmm. our, like that we bring with us all of the shit from the world, yes. right? Like all of our mm -hmm. past experiences, um, and our identity is like a big piece of that. Yeah, and really unpacking those in relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How do we unpack those things in a relationship in like a healthy, conceptual way? <laughs> just a little yeah. thing like that. Just a, little, just a tiny question. Yeah. Well, One so, word answer is yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. Um, so I think that, like, so the way, like, yeah, like, I guess, like, bringing it back to, like, all the speak about it messaging, right, is that, like, mm -hmm. that consent, like, affirmative consent is all about respect, right? It's about mm -hmm. respecting your partner, it's about uh, practicing empathy. Mm -hmm. um, oh, interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that for a second. Oh. Um, but, yeah, it's about um, practicing empathy. It's about having those connections to your partner, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, like, if you are trying to, like, date responsibly and think about this point of intersection, uh, intersectionality while dating, it's going to be critical to make sure that like the thing, the way you're interacting with your partner is the way that, like you said, is like nourishing them, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's helping to like build them up. And so it's the difference between, um, you know, like people use the term like big black cock, right? Or like mm -hmm. talking about like, like, oh, that like big black ass and all mm -hmm. that stuff. It's like, instead of like doing that, be like, hey, what terms do you like to talk about your body, right? Yeah. Like what makes you feel sexy? It makes you feel comfortable, right? Getting like the consent and like having, even just like the thought of being like, yeah. I want you to feel valued. I want you to feel sexy. I want you to feel good. Mm -hmm. So how do I do that for you, right? Um, but then I think on the other side, right, it's like, we as people of marginalized identities don't want to always have to educate, exactly. right? Exactly. And, and being aware of like, yeah, being aware of, I keep coming back, power and privilege being, mm -hmm. and like how mm -hmm. those come out in relationships um, and just really, 
checking yourself and really like mm-hmm. educating yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And like going, learning, learning and asking and being okay with feeling uncomfortable because you're kind mm-hmm. of mess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're but like if you're up, invested yeah. in someone and and you're showing a willingness and an openness and um, not actively harming, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is a thing that it's happening. Yeah. 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 But I think it loops back around to that empathy, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. about, like we as humans, we can tell when we've upset someone, right? Yes. And so like you say something to your partner, you see they kind of prep And you just ignore it. Yeah, right? And it's like, like, like oh, so what you do then is like, is you'll say like, oh, I think I, I think I messed up. Like, what yeah. did I say? What did I do? Like, how can I be better? Mm-hmm. And again, like to some extent, if, there might be a time that you have to educate yourself, but they mm-hmm. might not be in a space where they can explain it to you. Yeah. But then also like, maybe they, maybe they are able to, but like, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't know that if you didn't mm-hmm. ask. Um, I think Sultana raised, again, a great point. Um, so it says, <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> Sultana, go ahead, girl. But <laughs> so the first one was up. So I was thinking about this recently and how can I go beyond putting swipe left if you voted for Trump on your Tinder profile, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that like, um, we have this thing, like this like element of propriety in our society, mm-hmm. right? Like you always like want to be like, prim and proper best foot forward in your first date, right? Mm-hmm. And like someone says something that might be off and you're like, maybe let it slide. And you know, like give them the benefit of the doubt, mm-hmm. but like, Maybe it's something simple as like you call it out, right? Mm-hmm. And like and like do it obviously in a friendly way, but mm-hmm. like but like call it like like oh like that's kind of messed up. What do you mean by that? Or like yeah. oh I don't think I agree with that. Mm-hmm. What what is that that you're really getting at? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know, but that might be something that we have to write yeah. about. I think we're out of time. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I also like maybe this is sort of going into the last sort of last question I had, but like mm-hmm. giving folks who live in marginalized identities permission to like not have to try so hard all the time to educate mm, so no. like yeah, yeah sex is a thing sultana and like oh, give, sex yeah, yeah like give yourself permission mm-hmm. to like not always have to be the perfect activist mm-hmm. in the bedroom no, yeah i think it's i think it's just important to take care of ourselves yeah. and to uh, know when the juice is worth the squeeze and know when someone doesn't have the capacity mm-hmm. to come to you in a way that's going to make you feel good and even mm-hmm. if something mm-hmm. feels good physically something right. feels good um on the day-to-day if there are those really digging moments, you know, if there's just one digging moment that makes you feel so, uh, I think it's, I think it's valid to not even ask those questions, you know, mm-hmm. and to really just like make sure that you're taking care of yourself and mm-hmm. walk away when, when your gut is telling you to walk away, mm-hmm. to listen to your gut yeah. and say like, no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just, make I'm you I have to take care of my spirit. Yeah. I have to take care of my heart. I have to take care mm-hmm. of my soul. This isn't nourishing for me. Like mm-hmm. maybe you can get to a space in the future where you can come to me in a way that is going to allow us to, mm-hmm. to build something or to have whatever. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't always have to be that way. <laughs> I'm standing alone in my office just snapping at everything. <laughs> That's what it's like <laughs> knowing her. That's what I do every time we talk. <laughs> 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 Here you uh, are. Just dropping yeah. truth bombs. <laughs> All right, well, we got to bounce. Oh, go. Are there any final, I don't want to cut anyone off, but any mm-hmm. final words of wisdom, things that you want to say before we let our goslings run out uh, into the world? Our hot goslings. And I was like, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, mine always boils down to the same thing. Is that, like, challenge the things that you're thinking. Like, like really, like, critically dissect the way that you interact with this world, right? Because it's, mm-hmm. I think that, like, people are fundamentally good, right? Like, like most people, like, like, don't want to be bad. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's, like, challenge yourself like really push yourself like 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 a lot of that like that uh, negativity comes from not thinking critically about Mm -hmm. the choices we're making and the way we're interacting with the world so like really don't be afraid to have that conversation with yourself yeah don't be afraid to be uncomfortable and don't be Mm -hmm. afraid to communicate and ask questions um and yeah don't be afraid to also advocate for yourself and take care of yourself and walk away when you need to Mm -hmm. yeah Thank you so much, Lala. <laughs> we will definitely Lala. have you back on another yeah. episode. This was so fun. We will post all. some yeah. of Lala's writings on our blog, speakaboutitonline.com slash blog. Um, and tune in next month for another hot goss. Yeah, the hottest goss. So Bye. Bye. <laughs>